Hi, good morning. My name is Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. Uh, and for today's live stream, I'm going to show you uh, some of my favorite ideas and my tips and tricks for transitioning um, my Christmas planting, especially around my front doors where I do a lot of my Christmas planting. I always like to have my front area really reflective of whatever the holiday or season is. Um, and how I transition that fully into New Year's uh, as well. So that way you're not doing a whole lot of extra planting and ripping plants out because those holidays happen so fast. <laughs> we have Thanksgiving and then we have Christmas and then we have New Year's like right away. Um, so there's a couple of tricks and things uh, that I have learned over time of uh, doing a lot of planting. So that's what I wanna share with you today. So I have an array of some of my favorite things we have currently at the nursery. Um, there's so many more plants that would work into this, but uh, I only have a short window to show you these all. But what I really like to do, and I think that's something um, that I've learned uh, a while ago and I really kind of have stuck with it because it just works so well is adding some gray colors into my Christmas planting for one thing uh, usually if you're doing it around your front door you have your little pretty twinkling lights going on at nighttime uh, it's getting darker so it gets darker a whole lot earlier so sometimes you're coming home late you're doing all that Christmas shopping and running around and you're coming home at nighttime and that's when you're actually seeing your planting um, and reds don't really pop very well in the dark but the grays do and the whites do and the grays particularly um, almost kind of glitter at nighttime especially with the little twinkling lights that we have going on so uh, don't forget to add those grays and those whites in and then the nice thing is, is you can pull the reds out right before New Year's um, if you're a real purist about that and you don't want to have red there uh, and then you have all the whites in the in the grays and and give again that kind of sparkly with New Year's we're always looking for that kind of glittery new start for the year uh, so the plant material really works well for that and really reflects that kind of feeling so um, I pulled a couple of my favorite things there's a couple of things that really for me just scream kind of winter holiday stuff and it's because they're the things that really um, bloom very well at this time uh, they're winter bloomers um, and they just really make me feel like it's actually winter here I know it's nice and gray today but we don't always really have a lot of seasonal feel here in Southern California so uh, I really like to fake it with the plants that I have so the one uh, really traditional thing that I think just absolutely screams Christmas Red cyclamen, they uh, are just so pretty. They're so hardy, they last forever. Um, the red cyclamen uh, is just such a very traditional Christmas kind of thing, but they come in whites, they come in pinks and purples, uh, so they can really fit into a whole lot of different things. If you do keep your red cyclamen in uh, for New Year's, a really cool trick is is because uh, usually they're still blooming well into February add some pink and now you've got Valentine's Day <laughs> so uh, they really last a very long time keep them deadheaded and what I mean by that is if you find a flower that's faded and this one's really nice there's really not anything to pull off of it but if you find a flower that's faded you can just follow the stem down into the plant and just pop it right out um, it actually snaps off pretty easily be careful for newly planted plants that when you go to pull that you don't pull the whole thing out of the ground <laughs> I have done that before uh, so you kind of want to hold the base of the plant or just use uh, some nice little dead heading shears, uh, something thin and small that you can get down in there to keep those clean. But if you keep those cleaned up, they will bloom and bloom and bloom and bloom and bloom for you. And if you do a mix of white and reds, you can pull those reds out. Um, if you don't mind having red for New Year's, you can keep them in and then add some pinks when we get to Valentine's Day. So this is a really great filler. Uh, it gives you a lot of pop of color. Uh, it's very structural, which is really nice. And I like that kind of structural appeal of it. But when I'm planting any pots or things like that, when I have something very structural, I want to put something next to it that's not. So I like to have that contrast. And I'm a big contrast planter in general, style-wise. Um, but this is one that I absolutely love. This is Helichrysum. Uh, they call this white licorice. And the two of those together are just so pretty, right? This is a nice spiller. So when you're doing pots, we're always looking for the filler, the spiller, and the thriller. The thriller is going to be the really kind of bright, amazing thing that you have in there. But you want something that fills and spills. This does both, which is really cool. So this will fill up an area. Um, it's almost very liquid in the way that it grows. It'll fill up around the plants. It'll 
it'll spill over the sides. Uh, it's just a really, really nice, versatile plant. That gray color is so pretty and it's very predictable. It does the same thing every single time. So I really like that about this plant uh, is the predictability of it. Um, another nice red, uh, and I think people don't really think about this as being a good Christmassy thing, but uh, our ivy geraniums grow really well and flower really well right now. Um, you want to fertilize them with a little bit of acidity at this moment. So if you have an acid fertilizer, put that in there. Um, but this is a great kind of filler and spiller as well because this will trail over the edges. This is the ivy type, not the zonal. So this spills a little bit more, but that red is so nice. So if you're not looking for that really, really bright, clear red and you're looking for something a little bit more burgundy, a little more romantic, I definitely think this fits that bill really, really well. Um, the other thing that I want to show you too is right now we have our flower of the month and that's pansies. Um, so this is a buy two, get one free. So if you buy two six packs, you get another six pack free. So this is a great, great filler. Uh, very, very cost effective right now because of the deal that we have going on. We always have a different thing every month um, where you buy two, get one free. Um, and that goes for four inch and six packs as well. Uh, but the pansies, the white pansies, so beautiful, so perfect for filling in, especially if you're doing that gray and white kind of vibe. Uh, just such a really, really beautiful, easy thing. And pansies are great because pansies will go into spring as well. Uh, so they're a really long lasting flower and getting them established now is the perfect time. Trying to establish your pansies in the spring it's just not great because we start getting high, the weather starts getting really unpredictable. So this is a really good time for it. And that's why it's our flower of the month right now. Um, and then some of my other favorite things that I want to show that I feel two things here that I just always, always scream is Christmas to me is the ornamental kales. I love ornamental kale. It gets <laughs> really, really big. It's so, so pretty. There's a purple, there's a white. I love the white ruffly one. It's just one of my favorites. Uh, and it's just so, so pretty. And it's so funny because whenever we plant the ornamental kale, especially if we do like a really big swaths of it here, everybody's like, what is that? Because it just looks like big giant flowers. It's so pretty. So I think it's starting to kind of gain a lot of popularity and people are starting to realize how great it is. Um, make sure you slug bait for this because the slugs and snails do like it. Uh, if you have a rabbit problem, which a lot of people around here, especially here in Corona Del Mar, do have some rabbit issues, this is probably no go for you unless you have it up high in a pot um but in the ground you got to be careful but make sure you slug and snail bait for this one um and we sell organic ones here at rogers so you can just come in and get the organic one you don't have to worry about your pets or kids or anything like that um but it's just so so pretty and the, again when you see these two together this is just like so christmas for me <laughs> these two things together so so pretty um and i love the purple ones as well they're just really great so they're really a beautiful plant and then Heliobores. Look how pretty this is. So this is Heliobores. Heliobores is a flowering um, perennial plant that does really, really well around here. And it's a wintertime flowering perennial plant. So it, it just feels so Christmassy to me because it really starts coming into its own around this time of year. Um, and the white is just so great. It comes in different colors, pinks and purples. Uh, but for a, a pretty winter planting, you have a little bit of this, you have a little bit of gray, uh, you have some linear plants next to it. They just look so good together. So this is when I start getting into my whites and my variegated, my greens and my really crisp and clean. And again, that works so well into uh, that whole New Year's kind of crisp, clean, new start of a new year kind of vibe. Um, and then one other thing I want to show you real quick is some of my grays. So, oh, this one right here, this is Dianella, variegated Dianella. This can get pretty big, um, but if you put this in the pot and you use this in the center, it's really nice. It gives you that nice tall linear feel. When you're doing pots, especially pots around your patios and things like that, you're almost kind of flower arranging to a degree, but you want to make sure you give space uh, to the plants because they're gonna grow and they're gonna crowd each other out. So sometimes we kind of combat that with uh, putting a lot of space in between and adding things like our pansies as an annual filler. Um, and as the plants start getting bigger, you can start pulling this stuff out. So that way it doesn't look too empty, uh, but that's a really great way to kind of navigate the perennials versus the annuals and how to make your pots look really full right away. So you have that instant gratification, but down the road, you can start pulling things out and really let the Dianella take over the pot and be really beautiful. Um, this one here, I love this. I think I showed this one to you guys before um, when we were talking about how to transition our fall planting into our Christmas planting. So if you put this in already, 
you're ahead of the game. Um, this is Dusty Miller, but this one's called Snowy Owl, and I love this one so much. I planted this one last year. I've overwintered it. It's growing beautifully in my garden. Uh, just really big, beautiful, very gray, like looks gorgeous at nighttime because it has that whitish color and it feels um, almost kind of like suede. Um, and what's really great about this is it makes a really good cut leaf for flower arranging. So because I have roses and stuff when I'm cleaning them up, I use a lot of those in my house and this one works really beautifully um, with all of my flower arranging pieces. And it's just such a pretty, pretty one. The snowy owl is so great. Different than the traditional grandma's Dusty Miller that we remember from ages ago. <laughs> uh, this is a really beautiful one and doesn't get tall, doesn't bolt. It does get some tall flowers to it every once in a while. I just cut that right off but the whole plant doesn't bolt and get leggy on me it stays really really nice uh and just really has taken over an area and easy as can be it's a full sun uh plant i haven't full sun but i honestly don't hardly have to do anything to it and it just always really performs and looks really great for me i just go through and kind of clean it up but i don't even have to do that that bad um once you get this home and you kind of clean it up before you get it in the ground because some of the stuff on the edges gets a little broken as the pots get moved around next to each other but it's something that i kind of just planted and forgot and it's just so great and it's one of my new time favorites and now we also have all our conifers in so if you do any kind of conifer planting um, we have this really beautiful i love this i have I really, for Christmas, I always like that kind of romantic-y, weepy, draping, beautiful kind of <laughs> vibe. I think it's so pretty. Um, this is the Wells Weeper Spruce. It's so, so, so pretty. It's so great. Uh, two of these on next to a door side or something like that would be so pretty with really beautiful underplantings in it. Um, and then we got some of these really nice, pretty gray ones in too. Um, this one is the Dwarf Globe. I couldn't remember. Globe this, yeah. Isn't that cute? So pretty, so cute, good for an underplanting. If you put this in a pot and then put a bunch of uh, cyclamen and some kale around the bottom and something to kind of spill over so like that licorice, you're recalling the gray with this. But these four plants together would make the perfect planting. So pretty, so Christmas. Then you just pull out the, um, the red cyclamen uh, right before uh, New Year's if you want to take out the red and you got these three plants here going together and it's just perfect. So it's all very, very pretty, very easy. Um, and then make sure you're using those filler plants, especially those annuals to kind of fill in and don't pack them too tight because you don't want to have them be a total mess down the road. So you want to give them a little bit of space and just fill it up with all the annual plants to just make it look really nice and full for the moment. So it's all pretty easy, really beautiful stuff. Uh, it's a really great time for getting that whole area fixed up and ready. And you don't even have to plant. If you don't want to plant the red flowers and pull them out later if you do all the grays and the whites and the greens and then just do really beautiful like red garland over your door pretty red uh, uh, uh even a little doormat or a really pretty red reef then you pull those down for new year's and done you don't even have to get your hands dirty again so there's really great ways to kind of work around and make these plants work for you for all the different holidays that we are banging through so quickly at the end of this year which has gone by so fast um, is there any questions? Because we are live, so we can answer questions and stuff for you. We have our train up going now. Um, it's really a great time here at Rogers. We have our Falls for Planting sale too. A lot of the perennial stuff, if they have the Falls for Planting sign on them, uh, they are all 30% or tw sorry, 25% off. Um, and it's a good time to get all of your perennial stuff in the ground. So that way you're not rushing around springtime trying to get things established. Cause this is a good time to establish all your perennial stuff at the moment. So if you have an area that needs a little bit of redo or you need another perennial thing there, come get it now because it's a great deal and it's a great time to get it established too. So do we have any questions? Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. The first question is how does the spruce do in the summer? So it, it's uh, an evergreen year round, um, it does want full sun, does really well, can get big. So just be careful. It's kind of like when those people used to buy those baby alligators and throw them away later, <laughs> they get big, right? So be prepared. Um, so these guys can get pretty big. Um, this one specifically is a pretty tall guy over time. Uh, so it would be something if you put it in a pot and you want to have it next to your door, uh, later on you'll want to plant it someplace in your garden uh, that gets really nice and big, or even 
been donated. I know a lot of the schools like to take these kind of things too, because uh, this guy can get to be up to 20 feet tall. <laughs> so it does get very large. So something like this is an investment. Um, so make sure you have plans for it down the road, because if you put it in a nice cute little pot right next to your door and you're like, this is great, it's going to get huge. <laughs> so make sure you know what you're going to do with it later. Uh, just make sure you have a plan for that, because you don't want to invest in something like this down the road and then just have to throw it away. Um, so make sure you have a good spot and a good idea for it. This little guy, though, it stays a lot smaller than that one because that one is 20 to 25 feet tall. Uh, this one here only gets in. It's this one's super slow. This one's slow-ish, but this is a very, very slow grower. Um, a three, to, yeah, three to five feet tall. So it doesn't get too terribly big. Uh, it would be so pretty in like a nice, beautiful urn because it's going to be a very round, very kind of formal shape on its own without you having to trim it and cut it back and then put something really beautiful and spilling around the edges of that pot would just be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so just be prepared, check your tags. If you have questions, ask us uh, so you know what you're getting yourself into down the road. Cool. If you're in a hotter climate, which of these plants do you recommend or you don't recommend? So a lot of times with a hotter climate, it's not necessarily the heat that you have to be careful about. It's how cold. A lot of hotter climates also get really, really cold at nighttime and you start getting freezes. So you get out into the desert uh, and people are concerned that, oh, it's going to be too hot for these plants. But really, it's the nighttime temperatures that get them because you get freezes and stuff and we don't. So we're a little more temperate where you're a little bit more extreme. Um, so the one thing I always suggest, and we have them at all of our booths, and it's something you can look online too is a sunset western garden guide um, will tell you what zone you're in it's a little bit different than the zone 1 through 12s uh, it's a lot more detailed and will tell you what kind of uh, climate you have and if you get freezes and all that kind of stuff and then start uh, cross-referencing all the plants so you know whether or not they'll do well most of this stuff will actually be pretty good um, I would say the things that you would have to be careful with is like the pansies uh, would probably not do so great and this um, really beautiful unfortunately the heliobores probably wouldn't be uh, so happy if it got uh, too hot um, and then you can also too with these guys here around here very coastal this could be full sun but if you're getting more inland and we're just talking like Irvine or Tustin you want to make sure that these are getting afternoon shading and they'll tell you on the on the little tags here too uh, that this is morning sun to full shade um, but here we can actually get away with almost full all day sun um, very very coastal corona Del Mar, Newport, Huntington Beach, uh, full sun I've seen these do very very well um, but you get more inland and you want to give them a little bit more shading like Santa Ana, Tustin, those kind of places like that. Okay the helichrysum, can yes. you go over oh, yeah. um, growing conditions again? Yeah so this is so pretty and there's so many different kinds. I, I am always um, my eyes are way bigger than my tiny table. <laughs> so I always grab way too much stuff and I realize I can't possibly get it all on the table. Uh, this is a helichrysum, but there's a petite helichrysum that has a very tiny petite little flower that's so, so pretty as well. There's a splash, which is kind of variegated. Uh, it has the green, uh, well, not really green, but like gray and white. And then there is a limey colored one too that's also really, really gorgeous. So the helichrysum is so amazing. It is really a vigorous grower, uh, does very, very well. Full sun, uh, preferably. If you're really inland or really hot, some afternoon shading would be happy for this, but this can get pretty big. So be prepared for it to get fairly large and just keeping it cut back. Um, it is a tender perennial. I do find around here it's got kind of like a year or two on it and then it's time to pull it out and put a new one in. But for uh, a little tiny pot like this, not very expensive, uh, $6.99, you get a big plant. It can fairly large over time uh, and really kind of fill over sides really, really beautifully as well. And it's just such a, a reliable, easy grower. We have some planted here in some of our display gardens. We have the petite one in a display garden and it's the one that everybody is constantly going, what's that plant? And people will walk up to me and I can tell they have a question and I'll be like, hello, Chris, before they even ask, because I know that that's what they're all asking about because it's just, it's so eye-catching and it's so pretty at nighttime. These grays, especially fuzzies, I didn't even talk about uh, the lamb's ear, but the fuzzy grays at nighttime just sparkle. They're so pretty when they get the little twinkling lights or even just moonlight, uh, they really pop and they almost glow in the dark. They're so pretty. So. Helichrysum. This is the full-size white licorice. Then we have the petite. We have the variegated. 
uh, sometimes even the limey one. So it's a really great, versatile plant, absolutely. Okay. Um, last thing, can you just go over the plant names again sure. <laughs> one and more time? Sure, and I'll give uh, them a list so they'll put that list down below. Give me a second, sometimes it takes me a second to get this all uh, put together, but um, we have the variegated Dianella. So pretty, I love the variegated Dianella, just really gives you that really clean, crisp white and green. Um, this is the Dusty Miller, the Snowy Owl. Uh, I love all Dusty Millers, but particularly the Snowy Owl is my favorite one, and it's just, it's a really reliable low grower, doesn't bolt and get really tall. Um, we have the Lamb's Ear that I forgot and left down here in the corner again. I pulled too many things. Uh, lamb's Ear, uh, Stashes. Um, the Helichrysum, they call this licorice, uh, but Helichrysum is the botanical name on this one, and it mostly goes, some plants go more by common names and some go by botanical names, but the botanical on this is Um We have the little tiny um, dwarf spruce, I always forget the name, this is the globe spruce, so Picea. Um, and then I have the um, Wells Weeping one here too. Uh, this is also, both of these, amazingly enough, Picea related, even though they have very different growing habits, but Picea is the botanical name for pine. So these are pine trees. Um, the Hillaborus, I love, love, love this one. I feel so romantic, feels so kind of neat. Uh, there's all different kinds. This one is called Diva. <laughs> so there's all kinds of really beautiful ones. Again, this one is a perennial, it dies back down, but I feel like it's a shorter lived perennial. So I feel like I get about two or three years out of this guy and then I have to replace them. Um, but for a Christmas planting, um, they call them um, sometimes Christmas rose, lantern rose. I'm trying to think of what the botanical, or the common names on these ones are, um, but just so so pretty, uh, so Christmassy because this is the time when they flower. So they come into their own at this time of year. We of course have the cyclamen. The cyclamen come in a gazillion different colors, so I didn't pull them all. Uh, the red is so pretty. There's also one where the leaf is almost the opposite of what we have here, where it's the green on the outside and the silver on the inside. We have ones that are silver on the outside and green on the inside. So those ones are really, really pretty too. They come in whites, they come in pinks, they come in purples. Um, this is just star trailing ivy geranium, but just so pretty. That's such a great color, especially with the grays. It's just such a beautiful plant and will kind of spill over the edge and give you that spilling factor. Um, and then of course we have our pansies, which are the flower of the month. So buy two, get one free with these guys. Uh, really great deal. Really, really good, especially if you are planting perennial stuff to put around your, um, door for pots and things like that put the annual stuff in to fill up those spaces as those perennials grow you can start pulling the annual stuff out so they can fill in and kind of take up on their own space um, but you'll have that instant gratification that everybody's always looking for so you can fill it up with this um, right away but we get all kinds of really beautiful colors we're restocking some new stuff right now uh, so it's really really great that deal for the flower of the month is nice and you always know if it's the flower of the month this is the time to plant it so uh, you always know that this is a great time to get it into the ground okay that seems cool. to be all the questions for awesome. today Thank and you. i'll put together a list and i'll put that down below um if you came into this a little bit late and you missed parts of this um we will always post this so you can look at it later and if you have questions and you're like oh i forgot to ask uh you can uh put those questions down below and we'll answer those for you as well uh so thank you so much for tuning in if you haven't checked out our youtube page go over there and take a look at it there's all kinds of beautiful content there uh really really great videos from guest speakers uh to a different horn cultures that you see that talk about the things they're really passionate about so it's really kind of exciting uh, to see all that and you can see how to you know plant up some of the pots that we do um, how to put reefs together how to put garland together there's all kinds of really really great stuff there absolutely uh, make sure you sign up too for our email list that way you know all the new stuff coming up you know about all the new deals you know about the sales you know about the new stuff we're getting in uh, you can stay really really up to date there as well um, and then tag your friends down below if you got someone who's a big Christmas fanatic make sure you tag them down below so they know what we've got going on here so thank you so much for tuning in i really really like doing this with you guys it's really fun to get to do this uh be well be safe and happy gardening bye